Hong Kong Gospels are currently on display in Durham, and while they're being displayed there, the university's got its collection of medieval manuscripts, and some from the cathedral as well, and they're being looked at by Catherine Nicholson of Durham University. So Catherine, how did you get involved in this? Purely by a chance meeting. Um, the sponsor who's funding the project was an alumni of the department and he was in the department and saying about how he, he wanted to combine funding a project with art history and chemistry. The head of department put me in touch with Professor Andy Beebe who then drafted me in on the project to do the Raman spectroscopy because I've got a lot of experience of running the machine. What, what were you looking at? Because presumably we know we know that they're made out of parchment, which is animal skin. That, that, yeah. That's not the interesting part, though, is it? No, it's the pigments themselves that are the interesting part. Initially, you find it's just a lot of black pigments and inks that are used, but it's the illuminations and the decorations that give us the real interesting thing as to how the technology has evolved through time and how they've evolved the different pigments and the different uses for them. So you can see a distinct um, progression through the collection and we're quite lucky because the collection we've got on display is very geographically localised they're all northeast documents and we've got a good idea of when they were produced and where they were produced so we can link that to the pigments that we find on the page so tell us about some of the actual manuscripts that you were studying with your spectrometer the Durham Gospels themselves they're linked directly with Lindisfarne they're the precursor the ones that the Lindisfarne Gospels were copied from And the pigments that we're finding in them are typical of that age of Anglo-Saxon document. You find in beautiful orange-red lead, golden orpiment, and there's other colours in there as well that we're still sort of working to identify. So there's greens in there, which aren't the same pigment that's used in Lindisfarne for the greens. We know this by other spectroscopic methods. And we've also got a beautiful deep purple Now, there's a 50-50 chance as to what this one's going to be. And we've actually had to make some of this up, one of the pigments ourselves in the lab because you can't get it for love nor money. It's actually produced from mollusks in the Mediterranean. And you have to scare several million mollusks into producing this pigment, leaching it out, soak your fabric in it for weeks. And it's a long, drawn-out process. Whereas in the chemistry lab, you can get a pot boiler to get two chemicals, mix them together, whack it down a column and you've got your product out. How do how did the monks' pigments change over time? Um, over time, obviously, the Viking invad- invasion of Lindisfarne meant that they have to, had to move, abandon all the technology that they had there, and they eventually got to settle in Durham. Um, once they settled in Durham, they had to maybe 100 years' worth of production, and then the Normans invaded. The Norman used a different red pigment to what had been used previously. They used vermilion which they would have brought through from Spain. You also see an introduction of blue pigments, which in any of the Northumbrian manuscripts up to this time, you don't see any blue. And we can pick this one out as lapis lazuli. It also showed a different evolution in technology because not only do you have the different pigments being introduced, but the chemistry of the pigments is different. The orpiment and red lead, you would never mix together on a page They might not have known the precise chemistry where the arsenic sulphide would react with the lead oxide to form lead sulphide and go black, but they knew mixing those two pigments in the same space would go black. So these alchemists uh, cleverly decided the way they planned their pages that they would be kept separate. Using vermilion and lazurite meant that you could layer these pigments up, you could mix them, they could be next to each other in a given illumination so you've got far more detail crammed into one individual piece of page in that respect you don't have the outlines and it's a totally different style so you've studied quite a few manuscripts so far Mm. and are you hoping to study them again in future or study different ones well the exhibition has given us the opportunity to study them because, as I said, we move the Raman spectrometer to the, to the manuscripts, not the manuscripts to the spectrometer, because the insurance would be just too immense to move these historical documents. So when the exhibition closes, we're going to have another intense period of study of the manuscripts as they're going out of the door and being shipped back to where they belong. So Cambridge have very kindly agreed to let us look at some of their manuscripts that are Northumbrian in origin, and we're also ne- negotiating with other libraries as well. Quite a few others have asked us to go and look at their manuscripts in situ as well, so it may be a case of taking the ramen on the road. Mm-hmm.